Coming up, we have highlights from Blazer football and a preview of Lady Blazer basketball. Also, we take a look at golf while checking in on our cheerleaders. Your Blazer Sports Report starts now. Hello and welcome to the Blazers Sports Report. I'm Ariel Brooks. And I'm Matt Tanga. Valdosta State celebrated their homecoming with a win in their game against Florida Tech. Quarterback Caden Cochran threw for 127 passing yards while running backs Austin Scott and Cedric O'Neill combined for 220 rushing yards. The Blazers struggled offensively in the first half, only accumulating 71 yards. They finished the first half with a score of 17 to zero. VSU's defense was able to force interceptions and recovered a fumble to help the team, though. VSU's Chris Pope made eight tackles and Kenny Murphy made two tackles, one sack, and an interception. VSU finished strong in the second half, compiling 278 yards of total offense. In the third quarter, Cedric O'Neill scored a 63-yard touchdown run. Five minutes later, Austin Scott scored a 72-yard touchdown run, making it the longest rush of his career. VSU's defense also contributed with a late interception by Jeremy Grable in the third quarter. In the fourth quarter, running back Nick Davis scored a one-yard touchdown, running, bringing the Blazers' total offense to 416 yards for the game. The Blazers de defeated Florida Tech with a final score of 52-14. That Valdosta State Championship leading squad is hard at work to try and defend their own title. I caught up with the team. Here is more. It takes more than a smile and a perky disposition to be a Blazer cheerleader. The cheerleaders of Valdosta State University are some of the most talented, athletic, and driven men and women who drive the spirit of the university. Practicing at Wintersville Elite Gym is no coincidence for this group of athletes. And Coach Ariel Harmon knows exactly what kind of hard work it takes to be a Blazer. How long have you been coaching the Blazer cheerleaders? Well, this is my second year mm -hmm. um, coaching them. They're a great group of kids. Mm -hmm. um, but before that, I actually cheered here at the university. Oh, really? Um, I started cheering over a decade ago, so mm -hmm. it's really great to you know, be involved with the program so long. I know how the program's structured. I know mm -hmm. how it should run. I know what the kids should be doing, you mm -hmm. know. So it's great to be involved um, mm -hmm. from beginning to end because I'm getting a good sense of what we need and where we're going. It's really important for me um, to stress cleanliness. Um, and anybody that knows anything about cheerleading, it's, mm -hmm. you know, being clean, doing technique because this sport is very technical um, and it can be very dangerous. So for me this year, I would like to keep my girls as safe as possible. This year has been one of those tough years where we're kind of struggling with injuries and our numbers are low. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, we've always had a huge, um, huge team, sometimes taking 72 kids. So imagine 72 kids standing on the sideline. This year we have 29 kids. Um, and with the injuries that they have, that they sustain from all the tumbling and the wear and tear on their knees, you know, it can break them down practicing five days a week plus games. So, you know, we like to get back to the larger numbers, hopefully maybe have a, another tryout this season. But mm -hmm. as far as this year, I'm really preaching for them to be, you know, safe in what they do and um, to really follow through on their technique. That's important to me. If they can do that, I know they'll be very successful at Nationals this year. To find out how you can support your Varasta State cheerleaders on their journey to another championship, visit the Varasta State website for more information. With your Blazer Sports Report, I'm Ariel Brooks. Make sure to support our cheerleaders as they motivate our Blazers at the next game. The Lady Blazers basketball team is working diligently to prepare for their upcoming season. Matt Tanga caught up with Coach Hill to get details on the ladies' preparation methods. 
The Lady Blazer basketball team are fired up with the release of their schedule for their upcoming season. The women's basketball team finished their last season with a record of 16 and 11. I had a chance to talk with the head coach, Coach Kylie Hill, on his take for the preparation for the upcoming season. Well, basically, we have about a seven and a half week preseason program that we utilize. Uh, we have weight program to sprinting to conditioning, you name it, we do it. Uh, we're now we're two, uh, in an eight hour window per week, we're given by the NCA. And within those eight hours, we'll have two with, two with a basketball per player. So we've been doing individual stuff, team stuff, and just still getting us prepared mentally as well as physically. It, you, know, we, you, you, you come into it energized. And if, if you don't, then it's a, it's, a poor, it's a poor thing to start out with because you should, probably, should be playing the game to start with. Uh, but uh, you know, this time is, is excitement. This time is about you know, the bright, bright future coming ahead. And our kids, I think, are ready to embrace a good season. The Lady Blazers will host their first game against Trinity Baptist right here at the PE Complex on November 11th at 6 p.m. And for your Blazers Sports Report, I'm Matt Tanga. Looks like the Lady Blazers are taking steps to improve from last year. We will be looking forward to a great season. The VSU golf team is hard at work. For more, we turn to Isaiah Fofana. As the temperature drops and the winds pick up, Fall comes into full swing as the Blazers swing away at Kinderloo Forest in preparation for the Sonoma State Intercollegiate Tourney in Sonoma, California. The team started off the season rough, not placing above ninth in their past two meetings. Coach Purvis is facing the trouble a lot of golf coaches encounter when working during an academic semester. Class schedules don't allow for players to formally meet for the few hours it takes to go through an entire round, so the team meets a couple times a week as schedules allow. The team lost a few good seniors from the past year, so they're looking towards their young team, consisting of mostly freshmen, to carry the team. Golf, being an individual effort, relies more on the player itself than, in, than the team in general. The Blazers are hard at work here at Kindaloo Golf Course in preparation for their upcoming tournament this weekend at Sonoma State University. For the Blazers Sports Report, I'm Isaiah Fofana. We wish our golfers the best in their upcoming tournament all the way in Sonoma, California. The Valdosta State Blazers recently played Gulf South Conference rival West Alabama. The Blazers took the lead in the early game when Willie Downs returned the opening kickoff 97 yards for a touchdown. Seconds later, Tiger quarterback Gary Johnston completed a 23-yard pass to Kendrick Rhodes for a touchdown. The half ended with Valdosta State leading 16-14. The Tigers of West Alabama came out ready to play in the second half and scored on their first possession. Tiger quarterback Kyle Caldwell gained a first down on third and 24 after he completed a 46-yard pass to Chad Tuchek, which set up for Kendrick Rhodes to rush to the end zone for a touchdown. Following his second touchdown for the Tigers, Valdosta State's Caden Cochran answered with a completed pass to Blazers Centavius Jones for a touchdown. Unfortunately, the Blazers were unable to hang on as the Tigers defeated the top-ranked Blazers with a final score of 49-30. to Well, that wraps up our show for today. I'm Ariel Brooks. And I'm Matt Tanga. We'll see you next time right here on the Blazers Sports Report. Go, Go Blazers! Blazers.